This is Robert at uh, Merit Web Project, and today we're going to look at um, interpretation of the addictions and dependency scale. And I have uh, put one in for James, so we're going to go get that. And this is a set of fabricated results, so um, they might look a little abnormal. And um, this first part tells you um, how to interpret the numbers. There are some exceptions to that, so that's that's listed there. Uh, definition of what we're calling addiction here, because uh, in the industry there's a couple different ways to look at addiction. Um, and we'll get right to that. Alcohol and drugs can cause a physiological addiction that includes withdrawals um, uh, identifiable withdrawals uh, phys physiological withdrawals when a person stops using the substance um, that's a clear indication of physiological addiction the body is addicted okay not just the mind it's not just a mental thing um, some drugs are addictive benzodiazepines and opioids are extremely addicting um, and there are some others but those two classifications are extremely addicting and alcohol um, when a person is genetically disposed predisposed um, can be addicting rather quickly and it's kind of interesting that there are certain ethnic groups um, that are uh, that seem to be more predisposed to addiction to alcohol than others uh, we won't get into that but it's kind of interesting that it appears genetically that, that some groups are more prone to addiction um, than others there is a difference between drug abuse, drug addiction, between alcohol abuse and alcohol addiction. Addiction in the case here has to do with the physiological indications that a person cannot live without that substance without going through some kind of withdrawals. So let's look at alcohol abuse here. We see a score of 127. If you go to that uh, video that's out there that I created about the uh, scores, you'll you'll see that 127 is um, well. It, it's uh, 2.7 standard deviations above the norm, and that's about as high as the scale goes. This person is out in no man's land. Um, way. I, I believe less than 1% of people score this high on a standardized scale. So we've got significant abuse indications here. Abuse is different for alcohol and drugs than actual physical addiction. You'll notice that um, alcoholism or alcohol addiction in a score of 34 out of 100. Now this is not uh, a scale that is pinned to the uh, standard deviation. So this scale will go from 0 to 100 and I've kind of put them just in, in groups. This score is related to whether or not the person has indicated that they are having physiological issues related to stopping the substance. There are some questions in this survey. Um, you know, I have blackouts if I, if I don't drink, uh, my hands shake, um, and so on and so on. So the, the indications that there is an actual physiological thing happening when they don't have their substance. Same thing applies down here. Now you see in these fabricated results, alcohol is at 34 and drugs are at 60. So, and it says likely middle to state, uh, late stage 
Uh, that's kind of just an estimate, and we'll look at ways you can determine where a person is. Uh, just a second here, it's in the report. Some people call these areas here addictions. I choose not to, um, but it's a matter of semantics. I believe that an addiction is a physiological thing that causes withdrawals when a person stops the substance. Although a person may really have cravings for food, when they stop food, they don't get the bends. Um, these are obsessive compulsive behavior patterns. You can see that the sexual behaviors, religious practices, and gambling are all at 127. They're all maxed out. It's not uncommon for these to go with both alcohol and drug abuse. Now, in the uh, development of this tool many, well, I'm going to tell you two decades ago, this tool has been out for about two decades, and, and people have been using it very reliably. We found out through extensive research that there was um, a group of emotions or behaviors um, that kind of go along with the, the whole addiction or the compulsive, uh, obsessive compulsive use of other things. Coping skill issues, uh, this person has scored on rather significantly. Uh, need to control, control issues, no problem there. Fear of failure, no problem there. And these are manufactured results, so uh, I just put these in. In this case, you probably find fear of failure, fear of rejection high, um, as, as well as previous relationships. Um, these are relationships that are quite historic, probably rooted in uh, decade-long uh, um, relationship states. Thrill-seeking, um, instant gratification. Instant gratification is a big one for addicts. They need it now. They can't wait. So let's get down uh, for a minute or two into this detailed analysis. Uh, this is going to talk about addiction and alcohol abuse. This is what I was talking about. These are the early, middle, and late stages. Look at these. Use your highlighter and highlight uh, the items that apply to your client and you'll see what stage they're in. Same thing related to drugs. Now here's compulsive behaviors. Impulsive sexual behaviors. Right here, some of the factors that may be involved in that. Go down through there. Talk with your client. Highlight these. Use this report as an investigative tool. Um, most of these are items that came um, in one way or another off of the items on the test itself. But we're not making these up. This, these are things that the client has told us. Not all of them apply. Go down through this list with your client. Find out which ones do. Gambling, same thing. Primary and secondary emotional issues. Coping skills. Need for instant gratification. They will all come up in the order of severity, shame issues. Um, again, you can see um, that, that that issue has come up. So we're going to stop here for now. We'll do another short video on um, intercorrelation of these, these items um, in a while. But this is how you interpret the addiction scale.